What's up everybody? This is Jimmy with Trading Decoded and I decided to make another video uh, on today's SPY chart, uh, reiterating how I trade SPY in hopes that some people will be able to recognize the patterns and the things that I'm looking for when I decide to take a position in a trade. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and launch Trading View so that we can start plotting out the day so I can show you guys what I was seeing. Uh, for those of you who don't use TradingView, I highly recommend it. Their charting software is second to none. Uh, and if you're interested in giving it a try, I do have a referral link down in the description box. If you end up signing up and getting one of their plans, then we both get a $30 credit. Outside of that, I do use, use it every day. I pay for it and, uh, I am so glad that it is one of the tools in my toolbox. So we're going to go ahead and start the day bar by bar and chart it out as if it's happening. So I can show you guys what I'm seeing and what I'm thinking. Cause this video last time I made one did very well. And a lot of people seemed receptive to it and, um, seemed to learn a lot from it. So we're going to go ahead and continue and try that again on today's spy chart. First candle, big green candle, right out of the gate. Now it's worth noting that we do have a that is the gap. Okay. I'm doing this on the fly here. So that yellow line is the gap. Technically we're opening and above it, so the gap was below us right there at, we'll call it 420.02. Now let's continue. Okay, so right off the bat, I'm going to go ahead and chart my high of day, just right there. Move forward some more. All right, now, this could be our low of day. Let's see when well, there's a lot of selling pressure still on top of this candle. So I'm not going to assume yet that where you found the low of day and we didn't, but what we did find because we now have a lower high and we can theoretically make a downtrending line at this point. So we'll go ahead and draw a line there and see if the trend holds. And we'll also see if this big red candle becomes the low of day. And by the way, at this point, we have filled the gap. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the gap line. Um, for those of you who don't know, filling the gap is a very high probability trade. It's not guaranteed, but it does happen more often than it doesn't. So I like to play the gap in the morning, but at any rate, we're going to remove that. So we still have our trend. We're following the trend. We're looking for the low of day at this point so that we can have some information to base a possible trade entry on. Okay. We're getting awfully close to breaking the trend, following the trend. We're out of the trend. Okay. I'm also now going to assume that this is safe to call the low of day. We're going to remove this trend line because it's no longer a trend. We've broken out of it. And we're going to go ahead and part our support. So now we have a little bit of a range. We know where our high of day is. We know where our low of day is. Now we need to see what spy wants to do from here. So, <clears throat> We're moving up. I'm still not doing anything at this point, simply because we don't know enough to safely take a trade. Okay. Those candles right there tell you that there's an equal amount of buyers and an equal amount of sellers at that level. Okay. So we don't want to do anything because still unknown. Another one like that. Okay. We could possibly be moving down. Nope. Tried to move higher, got knocked back down. 
And at this point in our Discord, I am telling people to not get into a trade because it's clear to me at this point that we're having a hard time picking a direction and we're trading sideways. We have no good information to base anything on at this point other than we're in a pretty tight range and we're not moving up and we're not really moving down. So we keep playing this out. Big wicks at the top, wicks at the bottom. It's not wanting to go anywhere. The, the, the fight is strong between the buyers and sellers here. Okay, now we've at this point come down here a couple of times and it was kind of resistance at one point in time. So I'm going to go ahead and plot a line. Uh, where, where are we doing this here? Here. And until we break at least above or below that line, I'm not really looking to make any moves because we don't know anything still yet. We just know we are trading sideways. Okay, so we, we drop below it, but we didn't candle close below it. Still chopping around there. All right, now we are looking to break through that high of day at this point. I am thinking at this point, maybe a call is in order, but I'm not going to get into a call until I break above and close a candle through that previous high of day. And it's a good thing I waited. We're coming back down. We're moving back up. Okay. So now we have tempted to break out. We are moving up. It looks like maybe not big green candle. Again, we're knocking on that door to break through. Okay. We get through now at this point, I want to believe that it's possible we're moving up, trending up. We got lower highs. I'm sorry, higher lows. So we're going to drop a line there. Again, we're using this solely as a reference. But because we broke the high a day with a candle close, I am going to go ahead and call this a an aggressive call entry point. Okay. Because we broke the high of day, we're trending up. I'm going to go ahead and call this an aggressive play and we'll see how it plays out. Where is your cut? If you get into a call here or here, you would obviously have your stop loss slightly below your entry point or see if this trend stays in play and use this right here as a point to get out if we end up breaking through there. Let's go. I'm gonna kind of go through these candles a little quick. We're still in calls, everything looks good. Uh, we're coming back down. A lot of tails on the tops of these candles, these wicks. But then we get some nice greens. We're still moving up, still moving up, putting in higher highs. Okay, now I'm getting worried because I'm getting down to that point where I possibly or I'm either going to break the trend or I'm going to break through my stop loss, which was a previous resistance point. Okay, the, the, the same rules for trading always apply. What is resistance eventually becomes support and what is support will oftentimes become resistance. Okay, so right now we're treating this particular resistance as actual support now and using it as a stop loss. We get very close there. Okay. We're maintaining the trend. We got a nice green candle to move us away from our possible cut stop loss. Okay. Moving up, moving up. See if we could put in a higher high, which would be nice. Lots of selling pressure. You can see it with these big wicks, but then we're getting nice green candles in between here and there. Still riding that line. 
Oof, close. Okay, another big green candle. Also created another high of day. Another high. All right, we're moving up. We're moving up. Oh, we're going to test the trend again. Nope. Okay. We had a big green candle with no wick on top. Now we have our big red candle with a wick on top. Thinking maybe the sellers are interested in stopping this run. But also, this was supposed to be the time that the one-year and five-year inflation expectation reports were supposed to come out, which ironically, I don't know if they ever did. But I'm going to go ahead and mark this zone because that's when the Fed was supposed to release information. All right, but as far as we know, we're still trending up. We haven't broken our trend line. Trading a little bit sideways. We're getting a little bit more red candles. All right, now we're coming close to this trend line. Now, what we are looking for when we start to reverse direction is previous lines of resistance, which in this case is going to be right here. Because we bounced off of that several times on our journey up. Well, now we're moving down. Okay, we broke through our trend line which tells me that their move up has slowed, stopped, or reversed. So we have to play out and see what happens. We're testing what used to be resistance as possible support to see if we bounce off and continue upwards or if we break through it. Close. Okay, there's a candle close below it. Now, if you were playing aggressively, that would be your trigger to possibly get into a put. We would want to cut a little bit above that zone if you were going to set a stop loss. Fortunately, we move down, we come back to retest what was resistance earlier in the day. If you look just to the left, it acts again as resistance and we start moving down. Okay. Well, we already had a resistance level drawn here. So if you missed this first put, you would be looking to possibly do the same thing you did here, here. Let's see if we can get through or day even down to. Okay. We're getting close. Does it act as support or do we break through it? and get into a position. It's acting as support. That would have been an aggressive candle to get in on because it barely closed through the line. So there you go. You get a full red bar below that line. At that point, you can absolutely and presumably safely get into a put right there. Now again, we had a level of resistance that also asked, act, ad, acted as support at this level. So let's continue down and see what happens. Oh, come on. Sorry about that. Had a glitch in the matrix. All right. So does it come back and test that? Doesn't look like it. Okay. That was a big red bar. We still didn't close below it. So I'm gonna play cautious and wait. Close. We're still hovering on the line. So again, if you're playing aggressively, you could get in. I would wait for a little bit stronger of a move down. That one there is pretty good. That was a full candle close below. I would get into my puts at that point. So that's your put entry number three. We are obviously trending down at this point and we are looking for previous levels of support and resistance to act as our triggers to get into these. Now the next one down that we have 
was our low of day. So again, like these previous moves, we would be looking to test to bounce or test to break through. We have to see what happens. We're heading in the right direction. Oh, we're coming back to possibly test. Now, if we break through this, a little bit above that line, somewhere in this range, we would get stopped out of that put. Well, it looks like it's continuing to move lower. We're coming into the zone where we might want to take another put. Let's see what happens. It's also worth noting, since we're here, if you happen to get into a put at the top, these zones here that we were using as entries for other puts could also be targets for you to take profit as well. Because in this case, we did break through them, you didn't have to take profits. But as we get closer to what could be support levels, you would want to sell into the momentum of coming down to this, or at least be ready to in case this turns into a bounce back up. We never know until it's happened. Personally, on my small account, I prefer to take profits when we were coming into an area where there could be a reversal or could be some buyers that come in and stop the move and turn us back the other way or even creates a chop. Um, it's, a good, it's a good thing to get into, a good habit for that reason because at any point this could just become support and that we don't break through and it bounces back up and you've left money on the table. Likewise, it could continue act as partial support and then break through. And had you sold, you would have been leaving money on the table. These are things you're going to have to deal with on a regular basis as a trader. And as you get better and your account grows, you can afford to take the risk of holding through these types of zones. Okay. Now, if you come up onto a zone with some strong momentum, it's worth holding on to because you would like to believe that, that momentum is going to continue down. But if you're coming down here, chopping around, chopping around, and then you move down a little bit, chop some more, chop some more, and then move down a little bit, chop some more, that to me says that there's enough buyers in that zone that at some point they're going to get to a level that matters and they're going to stop the fall. That's just food for thought. That's the way I play on my small account where I don't have a lot of money to be uh, gambling with essentially. So let's get back to this. We're bouncing off this low of day, which is acting as support right now. Oof, we almost closed below that. Still near it. Oh, that's not enough for me to jump in. Again, not enough. We're right on that line. It's, it's clear that they don't want it to go farther down and hmm, could get a bounce. Now, I am not looking to get into a call because I'm not convinced this is a reversal until at least we get back to what was support and resistance, a major line that's been tested several times already for a break above that. Then I would debate on taking calls. Until then, I'm not fighting the trend. Okay, oh, still moving. Really doesn't want to break below that low of day. That's a big red candle. Let's, and there it is. So there, what do we got? Another put entry. This is again an aggressive play because we don't know that this candle is or is not going to be the, the low of the day. But the probabilities are on our side that the trend is going to continue down. We tried to move up, we failed twice. We came back down to test the support. We broke through it. I'm a believer that we are gonna continue the trend down because we had been trending down up until that point and failed to move higher. So, Okay, it wants to test that now as resistance. Uh, 
All right. And the rest seems to be history. We are still trending down. Um, at this time of day, I am telling people in my Discord to not take any positions uh, because Theta is just going to burn. Um, you know, there's no telling what's going to happen at this point. There was no telling at any point. But you would, you could, you could theoretically ride this down. At some point, you would take profits if you got in here, but. From this point here to this point here, that was about a $4 move, if I'm not mistaken. So we went from 419 all the way down to 415. So it's a it's a decent move. It's at least a four and a half dollars. Uh that put alone right there would have made you some coin. So I'm gonna go ahead and let the rest of this chart play out. We never did go back up there and retest that level of uh support or resistance. Um and that was how our day ended. So again, it takes patience to see these plays, but when you see them and you start to understand them, you will gain the confidence in your ability and willingness to take a trade. And that, that in and of itself removes emotion from the trade because you say to yourself, I got into this because it made technical sense. I don't care about the news. I don't care about the fundamentals. I mean, with SPY, it's not really a fundamental type of thing that you're trading, but at the end of the day, technicals work. They do. You just have to get used to spotting them and get used to understanding on how to use them to your advantage. I had people in my discord asking, should we be buying calls? Did we hit the bottom? Blah, blah, blah. Again, I had said, and I can grab screenshots of it for the people who are not in the Discord, where I said, I wouldn't touch this thing with a 10-foot pole. In fact, I said it in two different Discords. And fortunately, it I was proven right. We never had a chance to really make any money on calls after we made this reversal at 11 o'clock in the morning when the Fed news was supposed to come out. So it was a good day. Um, I traded it well. And I know some other people in our community did it also, but some people lost money today. And that's when I feel the need to make videos like this. So if you guys found any useful information in this, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna continue to try and put content together uh, until I pound it into your heads what to look for so that you can successfully do this also. Um, I have a link to our Discord community down in the description box. I also have a link to our Patreon so that if you feel that you'd like to help support the community, uh, you can do so. We It's $10 a month. Uh, you get access, obviously, to our Discord and all kinds of things that we, we, we do in there every day. Um, and we'd love to have you, uh, you don't have to be a patron to be in the discord. So there's that. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you in the next one. See ya.